Okay, quick warning, don't take shots. Don't take shots every time I say tubular bind off or you're going to get in trouble or unless you're taking shots of water. Scratch that. Take a shot of water today every time I say tubular bind off and you will be totally hydrated for the rest of the day, I promise. <laughs> Hey y'all y'all, welcome back to my channel. My name is Carrie. This is where I talk about yarn wrangling. This is not where I normally talk about yarn wrangling. I am a different space. Um, I miss my craft room. I miss it. Oh God. If you've been following me for any amount of time, you know that I've been dealing with the flood and my usual shooting space in my craft room is under renovation. So I'm making do in this very white room. Very white. But I do have some good news. I have a finished project to share with you, and it is this. Remember this? This is my robot pot holder. You may recall I did a video a while back starting this project, and I demonstrated how I utilize Judy's Magic Cast On to create this tubular edge. Well, I have since finished the project, and I used its matching bind off, a tubular bind off. And I've got to say, I absolutely love the results. I think tubular edges on a project are just so beautiful. And it's a great way to begin and end a project that is based in one by one ribbing, brioche, or double knit. So hit subscribe, hit the notification bell, give this video a thumbs up, and find out how I do a tubular bind off. Before we get started, as always, quick reminder that down in the description box, you will find timestamps to different parts of the video. Of course, I always hope that you'll watch through the whole video at least one time. Uh, not only do you not know what funny moment or quick tip might be thrown in there, but it really does help me with the YouTube algorithm and it does help support my channel. Also down below, you will find a list of materials and resources that I found useful for today's video. Some of these will have clearly marked affiliate links. If you click on one of these links, it'll take you to a shopping website where you can make a purchase. And if you do, I then might earn a small commission, which helps support my channel. If you utilize one of my affiliate links, thank you so much for your kind digital support. And if not, I'm really just glad you're here watching a video today. Okay, on with the demonstration. Here's the thing about all tubular bind offs that you should know going into this. All right. They all basically involve grafting. Sorry, I can hear some screams coming from the ether. <laughs> if you want to run away in horror and be like, no, thank you, ma'am, not interested, no, thank you. I understand. I know grafting is not everybody's cup of tea, but, 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 if you're willing to dive into doing a graft, it's hard to beat the results of a tubular bind off. And I think it is so worth the effort. Um, and if you're like me and you kind of enjoy doing grafting, it's just a bonus. Um, although all tubular bind offs basically involve grafting, there are kind of two approaches that you can take in terms of needle setup. One is to keep all the stitches on your project on one needle, and this is often called an Italian bind off. So if you see an Italian bind off in a pattern, just know that that is actually a tubular bind off and uh, you can decide in the end what method you want to utilize to get that end result. Because at the end of the day, it's not about how you get there. It is about the end result in knitting, in my personal opinion. That's just my opinion. Don't take, like, anyway, don't take that any kind of way please. Uh, but if you see Italian bind off and you don't want to utilize that method, you can use another needle setup, which is a two needle setup. And uh, this is actually my preference. And that involves taking the stitches, dividing them into onto two different needles that are then held parallel together. And then you graft your stitches together like you would be grafting together to uh, fabrics together. And I like it because I find that it's easier for me to keep track of where I am in the process when I utilize two needles held parallel together. 
So for my pod holder, I obviously have finished the project. And if you want a little behind the scenes secret, uh, I actually already shot this video once, but unfortunately my overhead footage got corrupted. And so here I am doing it again, but that's okay. I had this small sample. I've been working this project with two stranded double knit, which means that I work both sides of the fabric at the same time. Now, if everything I said sounds like gobbledygook to you, don't worry. I do have down in the description box a playlist that goes uh, that has videos in it that go deeper into what double knit is and how it works. But for today, all you really need to know is that there is an even number of rows between both sides of the project as it exists right now. But when it's time to do my bind off, I'm only going to work with one strand of yarn. And if I were to just jump in and start working my graft, I would end up with one extra row of stitches on one side of my fabric versus the other. So to keep everything even between the two sides of the fabric, I gotta do a little bit of setup before I start my bind off. I want to actually knit one extra row on just side A, and then I'll use color B to actually do the bind off itself. So I'm going to switch from doing two stranded double knit to one stranded double knit. So I'm gonna take color A, and I'm going to knit my knits, bring my yarn forward as if I were going to do a purl stitch, and then butt slip my purl stitch. So I'm gonna be, and I'll bring my yarn back, and I will knit my knits, bring my yarn forward, slip my purl stitch. And so this is almost like doing ribbing where you knit your knits, but instead of purling your purls, you slip your purls. You just have to make sure your yarn is in front when you do that slip. That way, the running threads stay sandwiched between the layers of the fabric. And in fact, I just made a mistake. See right there? I accidentally worked a purl stitch. So I'm gonna back this up. I should have slipped, but instead I worked it because I was talking. forward to slip that last stitch and there we go that is my last row for color a and let's count our rows um, here's the last color change so one two three four five rows here at the top on color a but on color b there's one two three four so now that you can see I have five rows in color A and four rows in color B. So to do my graft, I'm going to go ahead and utilize color B. So I'm gonna take my needle and I'm gonna slide it so I get color B accessible for the bind off. And because I'm set up and I'm done with color A, I'm gonna go ahead and break this yarn now to get it out of my way. So with all that, I am now ready to start my tubular bind off. As I said earlier, there's two ways to set up your needles when doing a tubular bind off. You can keep all your needles, you can keep all your stitches on one needle and just start doing the graft. It doesn't look or feel like a graft because all the stitches are one needle, but it is a graft at the end of the day. But personally, I do find it easier to separate out my stitches between two needles. So I'm going to take all of my knit stitches and put them on one needle and then I'll take all the purl stitches, the color B stitches, and I'll put them on a second needle. Um, so here I have two needles to do that with. And 
To do this, I am using two smaller needles. Now, you don't have to use smaller needles to separate out your stitches, but I do find that putting my stitches on smaller needles does make it easier to do the graft. I have my tapestry needle, and having my stitches on smaller needles gives just a little bit more space in the stitch to get my tapestry to go through. So that's why I like to use smaller needles when I separate out my stitches. So, I'm gonna hold my needles parallel. Um, and so there's my front needle and my back needle. My knit stitches, I'll slip onto the front needle. My purl stitches, I'll slip onto the back needle. So, slip, slip, slip. Just slip them right along. Now the toughest part about slipping the stitches is just making sure that everything stays on the needles. So I like to put my thumb on top of the uh, stitches that I just slipped so that they don't fall off. By the way, I'm slipping my stitches as if to purl. Um, and slipping them as if to purl keeps my stitch mount the same for all the stitches. Okay, so there we go. All my stitches are now on separate needles. And you can actually, when this happens, you can open up <laughs> the fabrics, the two-sided fabrics, and look down into them. And I don't know, for some reason, I always get a kick out of this. <laughs> Anyway, so now I'm going to take this and I'm going to slide the stitches down to the other end. And I'm now all set up to do the actual bike off. So, of course, as I've been saying, uh, tubular bind offs are based on doing a stockinette graft, usually called a Kitchener stitch. So I've got my tapestry needle here and I'm going to have to break my yarn because I'm going to be weaving in the tail as my graft. So when I break the yarn, I need to have a long enough tail to do the entire graft and to weave in the end at the end. The end at the end, I, that, okay. <laughs> so I want a tail that's about three to four times longer than the width of the project. So all I do is I take the yarn across once, twice, and then I like to just go ahead and double it. I think that's easier. And then I get a little bit extra just to make sure that I have enough. And I break the yarn. Now, if you're intimidated by grafting or you just don't like to do it because it's hard to memorize the process, again, I completely understand. It's something that I myself have struggled with until I sort of like in my own brain work out how grafting like this works. And in fact, I did a video where I talked through kind of my thought process process when doing graphs and the rules I have for figuring out a graft. So if you're interested in that, I will leave, uh, I will have a link to that down in the description box and up here in the corner uh, if you want to watch that later. So I got my tapestry needle threaded. We're now ready to start the graft. And for me, the trickiest part of this process is always like how to get the process going. Um, I actually start my graft a little bit differently than what's usually described, but I find that it's the easiest to remember how to do. I have my knit stitches and my purl stitches, um, and I want to weave this in such a way that my knits are knits, and I'm looking at a purl bump here, so my purls are purls. So here's my yarn, it's coming off the back needle. So because it's coming off the back needle, I'm gonna start with the front stitch, and I'm gonna take that off as if to knit, and then I'm going to go into the stitch next to it as if to purl. Okay, then I bring my yarn to the back and I'm gonna take this first stitch off as if to purl, because it's a purl stitch I'm looking at. And then I'm gonna take my needle and I'm gonna bring it into the purl stitch next to it as if to knit. And then I'm gonna just tighten that up. So I've grafted my first two stitches and I'm ready to start doing the full process of the graft, which is based on a repeat. And this is how the steps are gonna always go. I enter 
I have the yarn come to the front. And I take my stitch off as if to knit. And then I come into the stitch next to that, the knit stitch next to that, and enter it as if to purl. And that's always the rhythm. You take off in one direction and then you prep the next stitch in the opposite direction. So I come to the back needle where here's my purls. So I take that off as if to purl. And then I prep the stitch next to it in the opposite direction as if to knit. So it's always take off, prep, take off, prep. <laughs> <laughs> and that is you are doing a stockinette craft and again I keep reiterating this that's what a tubular bind off really is doing it's really creating a stockinette craft at the edge of your work all right so now I'm going to come back to my front needle take off as if to knit and then prep as if to purl into the stitch next to it and I come back to the back needle where my pearls are take off as if to purl, and then prep into the second stitch as if to knit. By the way, down in the description box, I will have these directions written out. I'm gonna take this off as if to purl, prep that as if to knit. And I'm gonna pause here for a second because I wanna take a look at my work. I'm a few stitches in and I wanna make sure my tension is looking good, that my graft is going correctly because um, if I have any tension, if I have any tension problems, now is a great time for me to start working that out. These stitches are actually looking really nice. If they're a little loose, you can always kind of like pull the leg a little bit and pull up the slack and work that slack down to the tail. But this tension's looking really good so far. Oops. My needle fell out. That happens sometimes with smaller needles, but we need to remember the first rule of Hitchhiker's Guide, which is don't panic. Quick tip here, whenever I do a pause in my craft, I always make sure that I pause in the same place. Um, for me, that is right after I've done a prep as if to knit. And because in my mind, that prep as if to knit is the end of the grafting repeat. And by always ending my graft in the same place, when I go back to start the grafting process again, I very easily remember that I'm now ready to go over and do a take off as if to knit. Okay, so I'm getting here towards the end of my stitches. Just, and as I get here, um, talk about doing the last couple of stitches. So here I am, and I'm in my last stitches, and I'm gonna continue on as I have been. I'm gonna take off as if to knit, and then I'm gonna prep my last stitch as if to purl, and I'm gonna make sure I leave that stitch on my needle. I'm gonna come back here and prep this, take, I'm sorry, I'm gonna come back here and take this stitch as if to purl, and I'm still going to prep this stitch as if to knit. Now, you could just take these last two stitches off the needle. They're secure, but I like to finish the graft. And by finishing the graft, all I'm going to do is I'm going to just take my needle and I'm going to take it through stitch one as if to knit. And then this last stitch as if to purl and then take them both off together. And then tighten. And there we go. There is my bound off edge now. Now that all of my stitches are bound off, let's take another look at my finished pot holder. I really do love this finish like its partner, the tubular cast on. It is a gorgeous rounded edge that is elastic and sturdy and it's just such a polished look to uh, a project like this. And yeah, I just love it. I love it. But the key to success with doing a tubular bind off is really watching your tension as you are working the process. Um, if you're going to err on being too loose or too tight with your graft, it's better to be a little too loose because it's much easier to tighten up those stitches after the fact than it is trying to loosen up stitches from a graft that's too tight. Of course, the major drawback to a tubular bind off, well, there's really two. One is because you are doing a graft, you are going to need a tail. And if you get into a particularly large project, trying to do a graft with a very long tail can be cumbersome. So, you know, tubular bind off, if you want to have a project with a matching edge, 
and bind off, and it's a tubular bind off, and it's a very large project, know what you're going to be getting yourself into. Um, but of course, the other, <laughs> the other downsides, if you hate doing graphs, is the fact that you are basically doing a graph. And if you just want to avoid it, but you have a project that has a matching tubular bind off and cast on, you may want to consider changing the cast off because to get that matching edge, you are going to be having to do some grafting. And there's just kind of no way around that as far as I know. But that being said, if you're willing to dive into grafting and put in that effort, I think the tubular bind off and cast on is so gorgeous. I know I've said it so many times, but it's so true. It's so beautiful. I do think it's worth the effort. So there we are, that is the tubular bind off. And now I would love to hear from you. What questions do you have for me? Have you ever done a tubular bind off or cast on? And what are your thoughts about this type of beginning and end to a project? Let me know down in the comments below. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope that you enjoyed today's video and got some great information out of it. If so, please make sure to like and share with your other yarn wrangling friends. Liking videos, sharing videos, commenting on videos are all great ways to help support my channel, let it grow, let YouTube know that this is a great space for other knitters to check out. I love being here with all y'all. I've met so many great people and it really does help me keep this going, keep my mission of going, of spreading the joy and love of making things. So if you do any of these, thank you so much. It is so greatly appreciated. And if all you do to support my channel is hit subscribe, that is amazing as well. So thank you so much. That is it for me today. I hope that you have a great day day, evening, weekend, weeknight, whenever you may be watching this. And as always, happy health and happy making. Bye.